Hey guys, this is Camplified and today we will talk about Henry's law of the topic solutions in chemistry. So let's start. First of all, what is Henry's law? Now there are different definitions and we will talk about each one individually. Now first definition is Henry's law can be stated as at constant temperature the solubility of a gas in a liquid is directly proportional to the partial pressure of gas present above the surface of liquid or solution. Now in now all the three definitions are kind of same but the important terms you should know about is first one is partial pressure. What is partial pressure? Uh, consider an example there is a container there is a container and there are three different gases a b and c now the total pressure is the force exerted by all the gas particles on the walls of the container now what is pa partial pressure the partial pressure of a will be p a it is the pressure exerted by the particles of only a gas Particles of only A, gas A. Similarly, what is the partial pressure of B? The force exerted by the particles of gas B. It will be written as PB. And for C, it is PC. So, total pressure will be PA plus PB plus PC. But partial pressure is of individual gas which is present in the mixture. Alright. Now, in our case, what we are talking about is partial pressure of gas present above, present above the surface of liquid. In our situation, the condition is like this. There is a solution. This is our solution and gas particles are present above the surface of the solution. The container is closed. So gas particles are present above the surface of the solution and this shows the partial pressure of the gas now how it is related with the solution you will get to know about in the law all right so this was the first definition i repeat at constant temperature the solubility of gas in a liquid is directly proportional to the partial pressure of gas above the surface of the liquid or solution now let's take a look at the second definition mole fraction of a gas mole fraction of the gas in the solution is proportional to the partial pressure of the gas over the solution. Now what is this definition talking about? There is a container, there is this solution and there is this gas. The upper portion is gas, right? And this is solution. <coughs> now mole fraction of gas in the solution the number of particles of gas which are present in the solution phase. I repeat the number of particles of gas which are present in the solution phase is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas above the liquid or over the solution. It means the number of particles of the gas dissolved in the solution is directly proportional to the pressure exerted by the gas particles on the surface of the solution. Right? So this was the second definition. Now what is mole fraction? Mole fraction is represented by xi or x you can say x and if there are two components x a, a and b then mole fraction of a will be calculated as number of moles of a divided by number of moles of a plus number of moles of b. This is the formula for calculating mole fraction of A. If we are calculating mole fraction of B, then in place of number of moles of A, you will write number of moles of B. That's how you calculate mole fraction, right? Now let's move to the next and final statement. This is the third statement and this is the most common definition of Henry's law. It states that the partial pressure of the gas in vapor phase is proportional to the mole fraction of gas in the solution. Kind of same thing as the second statement. Let's talk about it a little bit. Now, partial pressure of gas in vapor phase 
what is it talking about is we have a container below you have liquid phase and above you have gaseous phase right this is gas the dots are representing gas now the partial pressure of gas in vapor phase this gas is in vapor phase its partial pressure is directly proportional to the mole fraction of the gas in the solution the particles which are dissolved in the solution the particles of gas which are dissolved in the solution have a have a value for their mole fraction and that mole fraction value is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas in vapor phase so you can simply write it as partial pressure is directly proportional to mole fraction of gas let me give it a name a mole fraction of gas a this is your henry's law right now what will be the formula for henry's law let's talk about that also this will be the formula for henry's law partial pressure is equal to henry's constant multiplied with mole fraction now you already know that partial pressure is directly proportional to mole fraction of gas we will write just mole fraction of gas now this was henry's law when you remove the proportionality sign you have to at a constant this is your constant that you have to use in defining henry's law so the equation becomes partial pressure of the gas above the solution is equal to henry's constant multiplied with the mole fraction of the gas in the solution right now what you have to remember about henry's law is that henry's constant is not a universal constant is not a universal constant what what does this mean it depends on the nature of gas and temperature it means for every gas the henry's henry's constant value is different right and for every temperature the henry's constant value will change henry's constant increases with increase in temperature and therefore solubility of gas decreases henry's law states that partial pressure is equal to henry's constant multiplied with mole fraction with increase in temperature the solubility of gas decreases we will talk about this also first let me draw something if we draw a graph between partial pressure and mole fraction it will be found that it is a straight line why because we know that partial pressure is directly proportional to mole fraction so if you draw a graph you will find that it will give you a straight line right now this is kh for different gases in water at 20 degree celsius or henry's or henry's constant for different gases in water at 20 degree celsius the value of kh for helium is 140 hydrogen it is 75 and oxygen it is 35 what is the unit of kh the unit of kh depends on the unit of pressure that is atm or bar these two uh, one of these two can be used as the unit of henry's constant now the value of kh for these three gases is first of all in water and at 20 degree celsius now all the conditions should, should be specified we are using solvent as water and the temperature is 20 degree celsius because if you change the solvent the value of kh will change if you change the temperature the value of kh will change if you change the gas the value of kh will change this is the case we are using if you change the gas the value of kh will change so every individual gas has its own kh value now what is the meaning of higher kh value and lower kh value if you think properly the value of kh decides what is the solubility of any gas in solvent i repeat what is the solubility of any gas in our case helium hydrogen and oxygen what is the solubility of these three gases in water right now how can you tell 
by Henry's for Henry's law formula, we have P is equal to K H X or Z. Now you need the value of mole fraction. Mole fraction is equal to partial pressure upon Henry's constant, right? From this formula, we can get this one. Mole fraction is equal to partial pressure upon Kh. Now, if the value of Kh is high, if the value of Kh is high, that is 140 in case of helium, the value of mole fraction will decrease because mole fraction is inversely proportional to Henry, Henry's constant. So, as the value of Kh increases, the mole fraction decreases. Now, when we use the term mole fraction, again, we have a container or a closed vessel. Below, we have solution and above, we have gas particles, right? Now, partial pressure is directly proportional to mole fraction. But using this formula, we can say if the value of Kh is high, then value of partial pressure will decrease. If partial pressure is decreasing, then mole fraction of the gas in the solution will also decrease from Henry's law. So, the gas dissolved in the solution in the solution will decrease. If the value of Kh is high, the partial pressure will decrease or and the mole fraction will also decrease, which means the number of particles of that gas dissolved in the solution will decrease. So, according to this condition, according to this condition, helium is almost insoluble in water. It is some, hydrogen is somewhat soluble and oxygen is soluble in water. You already know that because all the aquatic life is using oxygen dissolved in water. We are not talking about this oxygen. The molecular formula of water is H2O. We are not talking about this oxygen. We are talking about O2 molecule dissolved in water. Alright. So, the value of KH for oxygen is low, which means its solubility will be highest. If the value of KH is low, the solubility will be highest. If the value of KH is high, then the solubility decreases to a greater extent. Understood? So, finally, you can write if value of Kh increases, if value of Kh increases, mole fraction of gas in liquid will decrease, right? And another statement you can write is as temperature increases, temperature increases, value of Kh, value of Kh increases, therefore, mole fraction decreases. So, in both the cases, if temperature increases or KH increases, the mole fraction of the gas in liquid will decrease. This is your Henry's law. And with these particular examples, we can understand that if the value of KH is high, the partial pressure will be less and so the mole fraction will also be less because the Henry's law states that partial pressure is directly proportional to mole fraction. Right? So, that's how you have to understand Henry's law. This will be it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching.